everything can't be put in the freezer, so you might as well learn to can. I think that um, once you do it a few times, you'll enjoy doing it. This is gonna be my how-to video. I'm gonna try to give as much detail as I can. Um, today, I'm doing chili. <clears throat> I made a pot of chili yesterday with the intentions of canning. We used some of it for dinner last night. I held it over in the refrigerator. I've pulled it back out. I'm reheating it and I'm gonna can up the rest of it because I made a lot. Um, canning does not have to be scary or intimidating. It's not a hard process. It, it can be a lengthy process sometimes depending on what you're gonna can. Um, I'm going to start with the supplies that you're going to need that I suggest getting everything ready in the beginning before you try to start cooking your food or deciding what you're going to can get all of your equipment laid out. The basic equipment you're going to be needing are your lids. I'm going to be using the wide mouth jars today. and that takes the wide uh, lids and rings. I've already got my rings washed, or my lids, and the rings are washed. For today, I'm doing pressure canning. Pressure canning, you do not have to sterilize your equipment because it's gonna get sterilized in the process. That's different with water bath canning. Pressure canning, um, there are certain foods you just, you must pressure can. And for the chili, because it has meat in it, I need to pressure can. You need to pressure can anything that has meat in it. And I've made the chili up. I've got the hamburger meat in it. So I'm going to be doing the uh, pressure canning process. So I know that my canner will hold seven quart size jars. So I've already got those laid out, the lids and the rings. You're going to need your little tools. This is the jar lifter that you will use to put the jars in and take them out. This is a magnetic stick, and that's so you can get the lids out of the hot water. This is a measuring stick. It has um, a stepped measure, and according to the recipe that you're using, you're gonna use a certain head space. So you're gonna measure, I don't have a, yeah, here we go. Your recipe, is going to call for a certain headspace. So you're going to use this to measure, and that's where your um, food product and liquid is going to go. So you have those three things there. Um, you're going to want a ladle. You're going to want a funnel. Almost couldn't think of it. Um, the kits that come with these things usually come with a, a funnel, a plastic funnel. I have several, but I like my metal funnel. You're going to want a bowl. I'll tell you why in just a minute. And a paper towel. White vinegar is for the bowl because you're going to clean those rims after you've put your food in there. You're going to want to dip it, your paper towel, in some vinegar and you're going to want to wipe your rims down real good because if you get any food product or juices on those rims, your lids might not seal, probably won't seal. You're going to have a book that comes with your canner. In that book, the only place you're really going to need the instructions, your book, based on your canner, is going to tell you how much water to put in that canner because they're all, they're all different. In my case, it's three quarts of water that's going to go in the bottom of the pot. I use two books. They're both by ball. One is thinner, one is thicker. They just have different recipes in it. I don't venture too far from the canning books because they are tested recipes, processing times. They've been tested in a lab to know that um, your processing time and uh, the ingredients are balanced and work proper for preventing botulism um, and that is why we're going to process or uh, pressure can the meat recipe that I have 
if you're doing anything that is meats or um, non-acidic foods, you want a pressure can. Your fermented foods, pickles, um, sauces like spaghetti, chili, if it's chili, no meat, just the sauce. Um, the sauces have a high content of acid, so you can water bath those. But if it is a, a meat or a vegetable, vegetables have uh, low acid content in them, you need to process in the pressure canner. And that's to prevent botulism because it brings the temperature of everything inside the pot to a high enough degree to kill off the spores. We have spores for botulism everywhere. It's on all of your, uh, anything that you touch, it's in the air. But once in the jars, the botulism can grow. You cannot see it, smell it, or taste it. And the only way to kill off those spores is to properly process in a pressure canner. Water bath canning is different. You can do um, jellies and jams, pickles, tomato sauces, sauces, things like that with a high acid content or high sugar content. They can be done in the water bath, which is an open kettle process. You just are processing in boiling water with a lid. You're not putting everything under pressure. So just for the sake of this, I wanna show you a couple of different types of canners. I have three canners here. Because your canner is gonna look different or possibly look different than the one that I'm gonna use. The styles are all similar or basically the same throughout the years. The age of them is going to be different and how things operate are going to be different. This is a canner from the 70s. I think um, the date in the book is 74. You have a pressure regulator that goes on. It. There's a little valve here in the middle that's to, uh, a vent, vent tube to release pressure and you have a dial. All the lids lock. All the lids lock. You have a a ring, a rubber ring inside a gasket, and you have all these on all of your lids, no matter what style, you're gonna have these, uh, I'm gonna call them nubs, but they lock the lid in place on the pot. And all of your canners, see if I can get this out, are gonna have a rack that you need to put in the bottom of your uh, canner to set your jars on because you don't want any of your jars touching the bottom of your pot. You're going to have so many different styles of regulators. I can't hold on to anything. <clears throat> this regulator goes on here and these three regulators go on this pot. And they're gauged at 5, 10, and 15 pounds. If I was using this pot I would determine which uh, PSI based on the recipe that I'm going to be using and it would sit on top like that. There are different purposes and different pounds per square inch. This has a gauge on it. This one does not. But if you have a gauge, you'll be able to read what your pounds are. Every recipe is different and it's going to depend on your altitude where you're at. Um, here in the southeast part of North Carolina, we're at sea level and everything is going to be pressure canned at 10 pounds per square inch. This is a different style pot. It does not have a gauge. It only has where the regulator sits and then there's a vent tube right here. Here are the locks on this lid. Here's the rubber gasket. Each time you use your canner, you need to wash all the parts and wash your gasket because if food particles get up under that gasket, it might prevent the lid from locking down. A lot of people are scared. They hear horror stories about a pressure canner thinking it's going to blow the lid off and hit the ceiling and tear the house up. 
chances are that's not going to happen because these lids, they lock down when you lock them properly. They lock down and they're not going to come off. This one's loose because I don't have the gasket in there. But they're, they're not going to come off. You have to be doing something really, really bad for that to happen. And the instructions are really simple, so you really can't do that bad. This is the pot. This is the pot that I'm going to use today. This is my main. It's a Presto. have a V on the lid and the handle. You line those uh, V's up and then you twist and it locks. And that lid is super tight. It's not going to come off. On this one, this is a 23 quart. That does not mean it'll hold 23 quarts jars. It will not. It holds 7 quart jars. It'll hold a lot more of the smaller the pints and the the jelly size jars you can stack. For quart jars, like I've got in here, that's only gonna do seven at a time. This one has a gauge. I like using the gauge more than I like using the ones without the gauge. I don't even use those anymore. I use this one. Here's the vent tube where it will vent steam out during the process before you put your regulator on it. This is another. Um, this also has a rubber ring in it, a gasket that has to be washed. And before you use them, you are supposed to hold your lid up to the light. And you're not going to see through this hole, but this hole here, you should be able to see light. If you can't, you need to take something to go through that hole, paper clip or something, and clean it out. Now, <coughs> I already have the rack in the bottom of my pot. Tilt this, and I have my seven jars in here because my jars are already washed and ready to go. And what I will do, because this pot, the instructions per my book says three quarts of water, which equals three inches. So I will take a quart jar, fill it up, and pour three of them in here. And it really only brings the water to about right here. That's all the water that's needed. Now to get started you need you need your jars to be as hot as the product you're putting in it. I'm already cooking my reheating my chili on the stove. It's going to be hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these jars halfway with water plus the three inches in here and bring that up to a steady uh, boil. Not really, I don't have to bring it to a, a you know hard boil. I just need it to boil for a few minutes on a gentle boil to bring the water and the jars up to a hot temperature. That way I'm not putting a hot uh, chili into a cold jar and risk breaking the jar. So I'm going to get this on the stove and get it ready and I will come back when I'm ready to put the uh, chili in the pot. I want to stress the importance of pressure canning certain foods, whether it's meats or vegetables, anything that's low acid food. The botulism spores, they cannot be killed at boiling point, the 212. They have to be brought up or the, the food product has to be brought up to 240 degrees and that is uh, the range 240 to 250 is what is needed to kill botulism spores. So please don't try to water bath can vegetables or meats of any kind because since you can't see it, smell it, and taste it, you won't know until you have, have already consumed it and it might be too late because botulism can kill you. Okay, I have put my jars in the canner. I have the rack on the bottom. I have um, the seven jars, and I have filled them halfway or a little less than halfway with water. I have my three inches of water in the bottom of the pot. 
So I've got my burner on and I'm going to bring that up to just a gentle boil. Uh, here's another thing. I don't stick to it, but the rule of thumb is not to do canning on your glass top stove. Better if you can do it on a gas stove. A regular electric stove with the regular eyes on it is sufficient. The glass top is not designed to to do your canning on it, and that's because of the weight of the pot and the extreme heat that um, you know transfers to the stove. So far, so good. I haven't messed up my stove, but it's on its last leg anyway, so I don't worry about it. If it messes up, um, I've been wanting to get a gas stove for a long time, and that's what I'll get when I have to get rid of this stove. Um, the last thing I want to say about what goes in here is you want to put a splash of vinegar. Just put it directly into the water, not in the jars. Um, I eyeball it. I don't measure it, but just a splash is sufficient because if you don't, then you will end up with a powdery looking residue on your jars when you're finished and that um, vinegar, white vinegar, will prevent that from happening to a certain degree. I still have to wash my jars off, but it's not as hard. They don't have to be scrubbed off, but if you get that build up on your jars, you'll know what I'm talking about. So a little splash of vinegar in the water before you start your uh, process. Okay, my jars over here have heated up to where I want them to be. And my pot of chili is heated, so I'm ready to start transferring jars and put the sauce in the jars. But first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to empty a couple of jars and set them on the counter. They'll stay hot for, you know, a few minutes. My lids, which are not required to boil anymore like they used to be, but I still like to throw them for a minute or two in the bottom of the pot and get them nice and hot. It'll soften up the rubber gasket on them and to me I feel like it helps them to seal better. So let me get my jar lifter. Any other time I would like to save this water and use it maybe let it cool down and feed my plants but since it has vinegar in it I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pour it out I'm going to set a few jars over here. They will stay hot. And the whole purpose of this was just to get the jars nice and hot. I just want these to sit down in this hot water while I'm working, putting this sauce in my jars. I'm going to do three jars at a time. So now I have my jars over here. Let me get my vinegar. Almost forgot to put the vinegar in the bowl to wipe the jars with. So now I'm going to just fill these jars the measurement to where I need to fill them is going to come pretty much right here at the bottom of this ring that's going to leave the required head space I went ahead and did seven jars just to be on the safe side. I don't know that I have enough chili to fill seven jars, but I wanted to make them ready in case because it's better to have too many jars than not enough already heated up. It'll slow down your process if you have to stop and tend to one jar. So, just using the funnel, fill the jar up. <clears throat> and then 
gonna turn that burner off. I'm doing this over here on this burner because it gives me more room on my countertop to work than had I put this on the stove beside the canner. It just would not have given me enough room to work. Yes, I'd be lucky to get five jars out of this. Okay, so now I'm going to take my paper towel <clears throat> and I'm going to clean the rims. Because I did spill sauce. It's not easy to um, keep it clean when you're even even when you're using a funnel. So now I'm going to use my little magnet stick and go grab the lid out of the pot. I'm going to put the lids on those three. When you put your lids on, you're just gonna just give them a half turn. It's hot. You're not gonna crank them down much. It'll cause the the lids to buckle during the process. So it's finger tight is the recommendation. I'm gonna move these over. Finger tight. Now I'm going to go get more. This is homemade, cooked on simmer all day long. And where this is gonna come in handy is on a night that I don't feel like cooking. Maybe we're tired. Maybe I have other things to do, but we want something that's home cooked. So we have home cooked ready. It already has the meat in it and the sauce is cooked. What it does not have in it is the chili beans, the uh, kidney beans. Now, when I go to use it, I'll have to add the beans and some of them for a short period of time, but it won't be near as long and in just short order. Because those beans in the can, they're already pre-cooked and fairly soft. Anyways, I don't even have... Uh, a pint left in here. I'm going to save that. Maybe I'll just eat it. But it'll just be a matter of short time to heat those up with the, the chili. And I'll have homemade chili in probably 15 minutes. Comfort food plus convenient food. I left the beans out for a reason. You 
don't want to process the beans. They'll turn to mush if you're processing in a pressure canner. I'm going to take those out, this jar. I don't have enough for it. But um, there's a few things that you just don't want to include in your recipe. You don't want to process rice or beans or small cut up potatoes. You want to leave those out of your recipes and put them in your recipes on the back end of things. Okay, so I only got five quart jars. These are quarts. So now I can carry these over and put them in the canner. Okay. So I have my five quart, uh, pint, or quarts, excuse me, quarts in there. I've turned the burner up. I'm going to get it to come back up to, um, heating up and I'll put my lid on in just a few minutes. Now I'm going to put my lid on the pot. I'm going to line up the two V's, the one here and the one on the handle. Um, you really can't see it, but I'll try to turn it around. Anyways, those V's are lined up. Now the lid is sealed. Now what's going to happen is, I'm going to wait a while, the whole thing has to come up to uh, temperature and it will start steaming out this vent. When it starts steaming a steady stream of steam and you can't break it, you know, and it's just a real good steady, then I'm going to set the timer and time it for 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, then I'll be able to put my regulator on it. For this pot, this is my regulator, and it will go right here. Okay, the steam is coming steady out of this vent hole port, so I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and let it steam that long. Then I'll put the regulator on it. Okay, the 10 minutes are up from letting this vent uh, steam out. So now I'm gonna put my regulator on here. Now I'm gonna watch this gauge. I need the gauge to come up to 10 pounds PSI. During that time, this vent here, when it's starting to rock now, that's gonna pop up and stick and it's gonna seal it off. Right now it's letting steam escape. But that will seal, when I hit 10 pounds and that has sealed, I will start the timing on the process. We haven't even got to the process yet. For this sauce with meat in it, according to the Ball Blue Book, which I never veer from, I stay in the time limits and, and I follow those instructions. It's to process for 90 minutes. Now, if it had been just a sauce without any meat, it had been like 25 minutes. But when you add meat into it, you have to process it a lot longer. So it'll be 90 minutes. But you don't start your timing until you have hit the 10 pounds of pressure. You have to adjust the temperature. On my stove, it's generally between 2 and 4 to maintain the 10 pounds of pressure. So now, I'm just going to wait and watch it. I won't start my timing until it hits 10. Okay, I've turned my pot down a little bit, the canner. 
because I've gotten up to 14 pounds and I don't want it to go that high. I need it to drop down to 10. <clears throat> I set my timer for 90 minutes. That's the amount of time to process the chili with meat. Um, I don't have to change my processing time, but I do need to turn the heat down so that the temperature and the pressure can come down. Sometimes you go well over and it's not good to do. As you can see, it's at 14. But turning the burner down a little bit will bring the pressure down and in a few minutes it'll drop down. But I'm continuing to watch my time. So, and then if you can tell this, um, little thing here popped up that's sealing the pressure in it's a it's another a second vent but it seals the pot and it's going to keep all of the steam inside hopefully it doesn't take too long to drop down to 10. it took about an hour to bring it up um, to the pressure that i wanted but as soon as it hit 10 i, I guess i had it set a little high on the temperature it just shot up to the 14, but it'll come down in just a minute. Okay, 90 minutes has passed, and I'm going to turn my stove off, and I'm going to gently pull that off of the burner and that's going to sit here until this vent drops down and this returns to zero before I take that off. It's going to take a good while, 30-40 minutes and um, okay all the pressure has dropped down to zero here and this vent has dropped down so now I can take off this regulator. And I'm going to crank the lid open. I let it sit for about 10 minutes after it dropped down. You don't want to open it as soon as it drops down. Give it 5 or 10 minutes before you open it. Now I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put them right here to sit for 24 hours. Well, not 24, but just overnight so they cool down really good. Now, when they have completely cooled down, these lids will sink in right here. You'll hear them pop, and they won't pop back up if they're sealed really good. But after they're completely cool, which will take quite a few hours, then these rings can come off. They don't have to be stored with the rings on them. And that's pretty much it. They are done. That's five quarts of chili. Now on the next super cold night, and I don't feel like cooking, I've got some homemade chili to take out, heat it up, warm up some uh, kidney beans to put in them, and in 10 to 15 minutes, I've got homemade chili for dinner. If you have not already done canning, 
and you're thinking about trying it, I really wish that you would because it's a good way to preserve food for your family and it's enjoyable to have all these goodies on your shelf. Bye.